Welcome to this video on using conditionals and predicates in Scheme. This video is based on materials created by Professor Mark Kavatsa of the University of Greenwich and is presented by me, Andy Wicks. So let's move into an introduction. What are conditionals? Well, conditionals are the things that allow you to branch within a program and the if works in the way that you would expect. You see whether something is true. If it is, then you do one function. And if it isn't, you do a completely different one. Cond allows you to set up a series of conditions and perform different functions for each. For example, you could create different percentage discounts for different quantities bought. Predicates are different. These are predefined questions that you can ask about an atom or a list. These return either true or false, hatch T or hatch F in scheme. For example, you can check whether two lists are equal with the equals predicate. And that just checks whether list one is exactly the same as list two. Well, there are a lot of these that come predefined in scheme. So it's probably best if we move over to scheme itself. Now we're going to have a look at how you use the if statement. We're going to define a function called check0. And check0 takes one parameter, x. And now we come on to the if. We have if and then the condition is in brackets. So in this case, if x is less than 10, then it does the first thing that's in brackets if that's true, and the second set of brackets if it isn't true, if it's false. So we could try running this with check 0 of 8, which is less than 10, and check 0 with 12, where 12 is bigger than 10. And what happens when we run this? Well, we get 8 and 24. In other words, it's done the first condition for 8, but the second condition for 12. Now, we could simplify this a bit. If I just wanted to return the value of x, I don't have to multiply by 1. I could, for example, just have x. And if I run that now, that gives me 8 and 24, exactly the same as before. Now, you don't have to have the else condition. So what I could do is use this function instead. Now, that will work if x is less than 10, it'll display x. But if x is greater than or equal to 10, well, nothing will happen. So if I run this, all we get is 8. The check 0, 12 is ignored because there is no else statement. But we can make this a little more complicated. You'll be pleased to hear. In this function, check 1, which also takes one parameter, we're going to set up an if that contains another if. So we start off with if in the bracket, and then we have the condition that we want to check in the first set of brackets after the if. So if x is less than 10, well then it does the first item. First item here, the first function that we have, is to multiply x by 1. Now we know that, that we could just put x there, but I wanted to show that things are different for different levels of x. But the else has now been changed. The else also contains an if. That if is if x is greater than 20, multiply by 3. Else, multiply by 2. So it's going to multiply anything over 20 by 3, and anything between 10 and 20 by 2. So if I now run that with 8, 12, and 22, what I get is 8, 24, and 66. But that can get very messy. Having ifs within ifs within ifs, that can get complicated, even with good indenting. So there must be a better way. And that better way is to use cond. Here in check two, we're doing exactly the same as we did in the previous example. But instead of having that really awkward syntax of nested ifs, what we're doing is setting up a series of conditions. The first condition is if x is less than 10. If it is less than 10, just return x. 
If it's greater than 20, that's the second condition. Well, multiply x by 3. And if it's neither of those, in other words, it lies between 10 and 20, then multiply x by 2. And that's a rather neater way of doing nested ifs. So let's have a go at running that. So what we get is exactly the same as what we got before for the same initial values of 8, 12 and 22, but we've done it in a rather more readable way. The final part now is to have a look at some predicates. I'm going to start off by defining two lists. One list called empty, which is a list that doesn't have anything in. And as you'll remember from previous videos, a list always ends with a null. So this list just contains that null. The second list, the pair, is the numbers 1 and 2. Now we can define some functions. We're going to define a function called check3. By convention, any function that returns either true or false as its options has a question mark at the end of the name. So check3 is going to check whether whichever item has been entered, the A, is null or not. Well, if it is, it'll return true. If it isn't, it'll return false. So we put a question mark after check3. Check 4 sees whether the parameter that we're putting in is a pair or not. And check 5 checks to see whether two lists are equal. Now we can run those functions. We can say check 3 empty. That takes the empty list and sees whether that really is a null. We can see whether pair is a null. We can check whether empty is a pair. We can check whether pair is a pair. And finally, we're going to check whether empty and pair are the same. Now, if I run this, what I get are these outputs. Here, what I'm saying is that empty is a null, that pair is not a null, that empty is not a pair, but pair, that really is a pair. And finally, the two lists are not equal. Now this gives you a flavour of how you can use logic in your scheme programs to control the flow of what you're doing.